So there's a local chain bookstore that's near me that's closing. Is there some sort of saying that when a bookstore closes, an angel loses its wing or something like that? Hi Booktube, it's Kim at Kate Becker's Books. And today I'm here for a very sad, depressing reason. There is a local bookstore to me that is closing and they are Book Warehouse and it's kind of a chain bookstore, but they sell backless bargain books and they are located, this particular store is located in Kittery, Maine, which we visit often. It's about half an hour from us, but they're closing at the end of this month, which is August and having a sell-off sale. So it's a store that I frequented pretty often and I went down to uh, try to get some deals and support the employees and whatever I could possibly do. They, like I said, they sell bargain backlists. So typically a price of a hardcover would be around $6.99, $7.99. They have deals where you buy so many, you get a lower price. Um, their sell-off prices are $4 for a hardcover and $2 for a paperback. I think it might be even lower now because I was there last week or so. Um, but I did buy a little handful of books and I have some other books that I hauled from them that I don't think I've put in a video yet. So I thought I'd show you those as well. So let's get going. I ended up buying two classics. The first one is Thomas Hardy's The Return of the Native. And I seem to have been collecting Thomas Hardy novels and only read one of them a long time ago. So it's one of those one of those classics authors that I tend to pick up if I know I don't have that book and collect them. I'll get around to reading them eventually. Um, again, forgive me because I'm going to do quite a bit of reading from the back. I don't want to, but I can't possibly remember everything. Um, let's see. The book centers around Egdon Heath. Um, it's a haunted Wessex moor. And the main character is Clem Yobright. Um, he comes from a cosmopolitan life in Paris. Um, he, his cousin Thomason, her fiance Damon Wildeve, and the willful Eustacia Vi are the protagonists in a tale of doomed love, passion, alienation, and melancholy. As Hardy explores the theme so familiar throughout his fiction, the diabol diabolical, I love that word, diabolical, the diabolical role of chance in determining the course of somebody's life. Um, and I really like these modern library versions of classics too, so I was happy to find that one. Um, the other one I picked up, this is for me, pretty obscure and cerebral, but The Red and the Black by Stendhal. Uh, Stendhal was a 19th century French author. This is translated by Burton Raffel, Raphael. And um, The Red and the Black is considered Stendhal's masterpiece. And this, the story of Julian Sorrel or Sorel. He's a young dreamer, kind of a naive guy whose desire to make his fortune sets in motion events as compelling as they are tragic. Um, his quest to find himself and the doomed love he encounters along the way are delineated with an unprecedented, unprecedented psychological depth and realism. Stendhal is uh, considered uh, a classic in realist authors. And I think I read that in this book, maybe in this book, he is one of the first writers to include dialogue and psychological exploration of characters, talking about their their feelings and emotions and the psychological motivations that they have. Um, I think this is this comes in two volumes, so I picked that one up. The next one is the second in a series. I have the first one. This one is After Atlas by Emma Newman, and it comes after Planet Fall by Emma Newman. And I'm gonna read a little bit from this one because I don't wanna say more, more than a little bit about this one because it's the second in the series. Renata Gali believed in Lee Su Mi's vision of a world far beyond Earth calling to humanity. So this is a science fiction series. A planet promising to reveal the truth about our place in the cosmos and untainted by overpopulation, pollution, and war. Um, let's see. 
More than 20 years have passed since Wren and the rest of the faithful braved the starry abyss and established a colony at the base of an enigmatic alien structure where Sue Mi has since resided alone. All, Wren has worked hard as the colony's 3D printer engineer, creating the tools necessary for human survival in an alien environment and harboring a devastating secret. Wren continues for the good of her fellow colonists to perpetuate the lie that forms the foundation of the colony despite the personal cost. Then a stranger appears, far too young to have been part of the first planet fall, a man who hears a remarkable, a man who bears a remarkable resemblance to Sue Me. Now, as far as I understand, there's some queer representation in the story and the narrative. And I've had I had this one and I was able to find this one at Book Warehouse, and so I picked it up. And I, I don't really want to describe much of it, but um, was happy to get another book in the series. I think it's a series. This one I was really thrilled to find. This is um, Racing Justice and Gendering Power. It's edited with an introduction by Toni Morrison, and this is a book of essays on Anita Hill, Clarence Thomas, and the construction of social reality. So it's, a, it's an essay compilation about the Clarence Thomas, Anita Hill trial, event, scandal, whatever you wanna call it. Uh, I'm old enough to remember it as it happened in the media. And I thought this would be a really good collection to read and get a little bit more detail. There's contributions by, again, Toni Morrison, Nell Irvin Painter, um, many, there's a dozen or so, if not more, uh, contributors to this essay collection, and I thought that would be really good. What I like about essay collections or short story collections is you can read one at a time, you can read them over time, and kind of dip in and out of them. The next one is, I I saw this book on Matthew Sharapa's channel, maybe not for the first time, but he had really high praise for it, Infinite Home by Kathleen Alcott. This is a novel, and it, it it, the narrative, narrative is about kind of the family group that you pick, the people that you choose to stay with and kind of uh, make your own family. And this is about a widowed landlord, Edith, Edith, who rents apartments from her Brooklyn apartment building. She starts to develop advanced senility and she's kind of collected all these different types of people. Um, they are all need, in need of shelter. They're crippled in some way, whether um, in mind, body, or spirit, and they struggle to navigate daily existence. Well, her building comes under threat of um, selling and eviction, and they're kicking her out. And the tenants are all this eccentric group of tenants who basically form their own motley family. Um, and so they've created this sanctuary and it talks about what happens when they have to leave, where they go, what they do, who they stay with. And it sounded really good. This one is Eileen by Otessa, Otessa Moshfeg. And I also have my year of rest and relaxation on my Kindle. I haven't read that yet, but I was, I found this one and I thought I'd like to pick that up as well. And this is the uh, main character's name is Eileen. Uh, let's see, Christmas season offers little cheer, cheer for Eileen Dunlop. She is an unassuming yet disturbed young woman who is her alcoholic father's caretaker, who basically cleans him up, cleans up his messes. Um, she's an, also a caretaker in a group home for um, boys. She's a secretary at a boys prison, which carries its own amount of horrors. Um, she's consumed with resentment and self-loathing. Uh, she dreams of escaping to the big city. Um, and she fills her nights and weekends with shoplifting, stalking a prison guard named Randy, and cleaning up her father's messes. Um, there is a new woman, Rebecca St. John, that joins the group home that she works at. And she's there as a counselor. Eileen is enchanted and starts to develop a crush on this woman and um, there is some some darkness and twist to the story. So, so far that's all I know about this. Heard a lot of great reviews on it and uh, picked that one up. This one is a short story collection, The Czar of Love and Techno by Anthony Mara. And I read A Constellation of Vital Phenomena last year, I think, for the Critical Chicks book group. And I, I wasn't crazy about it, but 
This one, again, short story collection. I'm actually making a, a conscious effort to read more short story collections. Um, I've been able to do that with a couple other booktubers and Buddy Reads and, you know, Sean the Book Maniac and I read a, a really good story that we talked about on our, on our channels. And this one, um, it just looks really good and I thought I'd give it a try. Uh, in the 1930s, a failed portrait artist is tasked by Soviet censors to erase political dissidents from official images and artworks, beginning with his disgraced brother. When an antique painting of a dacha, somebody tell me what that means, set in a pastoral landscape crosses his desk, he subversively begins to draw his brother into every picture he censors. The decision echoes through the decades, threading together the stories of a legendary ballerina and her granddaughter, a blind restoration artist, a retired gangster, a widower who last saw his wife in that very dasha, and a soldier imprisoned in its well with a mixtape that may hold a final message from his family. Those all sound really cool. And again, short story collection, I can dip into it, read a little bit here, read one there. And yeah, like that. Um, the last one, and I say the last one, but this is just the most recent. I've <laughs> bought many books from Book Warehouse that I may or may not have showed you over the the number of months that I've had a booktube channel. Um, but I thought just to give the bookstore some props and, and you know, kind of more in the fact that they're closing and it's yet another bookstore that's closing around me. This is The Good People by Hannah Kent. Hannah Kent wrote Burial Rites. And this one sounds so good. It's set in Ireland, and I love that. Not only that, it's 19th century Ireland. Three women are drawn together in the hope of rescuing a child from a superstitious community. And the jacket also says this is based on true events. So Nora, bereft after the sudden death of her beloved husband, finds herself alone and caring for her young grandson, Michael. Now, it, I don't know if that's the right way to pronounce it because these are... Irish names, and I'm pronouncing it as I know the English versions. He cannot speak and cannot walk, and Nora is desperate to know what is wrong with him. What happened to the healthy, happy grandson she met when her daughter was still alive? So already she's lost a husband and a daughter. Mary arrives in the valley to help Nora just as the whispers are spreading. The stories of unexplained misfortunes, of illnesses, and the rumors that Michael is a changeling child who is bringing bad luck to the valley. So, um, this is based on true events and set in a lost world bound by its own laws. The Good People is Hannah Kent's startling new novel about absolute belief and devoted love. Terrifying, thrilling, and moving in equal measure, this long-awaited follow-up to Burial Rites shows an author at the height of her powers. I also have Burial Rites and would love to read that soon. Um, this is the world of folklore and belief of rituals and stories and mystery and superstition and all of that set in 19th century Ireland. So those are all the books that I most recently hauled from Book Warehouse in Kittery, Maine. Now, I, I live in a town with no bookstores. There's actually um, the only bookstore in my particular town, small town, near the seacoast of New Hampshire is an Annie's, which is an ancient old exchanger paperbacks bookstore. And it's not really, it's not really what I consider a bookstore because when you walk in, it's, it is filled with really old, decrepit, broken um, paperback romances. And there's a huge market for those in my local area. So they go pretty quickly, but the majority of the store is taken up by that. So it's not a great resource. The only other bookstore fairly close to me is Barnes and Noble. And, you know, let's face it, they're not doing too well these days either. Um, there are a couple of independent bookstores. Um, I was in Portsmouth, New Hampshire in my last vlog video, and there's one in downtown Portsmouth. It, they're scattered in my area, but I do not live in, I don't live close to a city or a cosmopolitan area where there are a number of bookstores. So when one closes, it's sad and it's one less place that book lovers like me have to go or are able to go to buy books. So thought I'd show you those. Um, I might 
get down there one more time before the end of the month. It's there's only what's today eight or nine more days in the month. Um, when this video goes up, it'll probably be less than that. It'll probably be less than a week. So we'll see if I'm able to get down there again. But again, I'm sad. I'm mourning the demise of yet another bookstore. Not quite sure if the chain is going out of business or if it's just this location. Anytime I used to go in there, there were very few people. When I went down to get this pile of books, I think I was one of four or five customers. And it's not a huge store, but it's noticeable when there's not very many people in there. So that all makes me sad, but I benefited and I gave a little bit of money to that store. I, you know, people are going to lose their jobs as well. And, and, you know, I consider that and I think about that and it's, it's not good, but hopefully there'll be some positivity that comes out of it after the fact. So let me know if you have any opinions about the books I showed you. Comment down below. Um, please subscribe if you haven't already. Thank you very much if you choose to do that. And I'll see you in the next video. Thanks for watching. Bye.